Hey everybody, time for our update to the Mimo Boot R package, where now you can do uh, two-way interactions, so moderation with a categorical moderator. Not a categorical predictor, but a categorical moderator, because I promise you it's gonna be much easier if one is continuous and one is categorical to make the moderator the one that you break apart by groups, which we'll get to in here in just a second. Um, if you wanna do two categorical ones, just do a Nova at the moment. Um, it's gonna be much easier on you. So I wanted to show you our GitHub page just real quick so you can find and uh, open any issues that you find. So if you have any problems and you're a GitHub user, you can come to our page, go to the issues tab and open up an issue. Um, if we have, if I have got any weird coding problems or you've done something that I haven't predicted yet and I can work out maybe a bug, if you're not a GitHub person and the thought of GitHub scares you, just shoot me an email at buchananlab at gmail.com and I will open an issue for you and work through the different problems that are sure to happen with any handwritten package. But it also shows you our um, links to the OSF page. Now the OSF page um, includes all of these tutorials and the documentation from these tutorials. It also shows you what, what I've been doing this whole time. So as I update with each version, what have I added? Um, so if we click on this and we go to the OSF page, <clears throat> it's got a wealth of other types of information as well, but it's got all the files from all of these. So all these examples are stored under here, under examples that you can download. Um, additionally, it's also got uh, links to all of the, the videos. So this is part four in our series. So we've been doing model one and model four from process SPSS now booted over into R. Um, and today we're focusing on categorical moderators. So just a quick plug for where all this stuff is. So I've got my example one moderation categorical thing open, but let's also look at the Word document real quick. This is also in um, the examples folder. And what we're doing is a two-way interaction with a categorical M. So I'll kind of try to draw that out for you guys, see how that looks. But what's happening is X is still gonna predict Y. So we got one predictor for that. Uh, M is gonna predict Y. So that's B1 and B2 for the two different levels of M. And this are two different, um, demi-coded versions of M. And then we've got BX, uh, BX uh, which is the interaction between M and X for one and the interaction between M and X for, for two. And that's assuming you only have three levels. If you have six levels, there's gonna be five of these things twice. Um, and so what we're gonna do is work with that same example we worked with last week, but this time we're gonna categorize murder as low, average, and high. If you truly have continuous variables, don't do that. Watch last week's video and treat everything as continuous. You'll have more power that way. Uh, in this example though, I just needed some data that would work and I knew this would work. So we're gonna categorize them just for the purposes of teaching. Now one issue, uh, jumping into power, which we're gonna do with the PWR library here, is figuring out how many IVs there are gonna be. You could run the analysis and just count the IVs, but let's say you're trying to plan ahead and you don't have any of the data and you want to pre-register this hypothesis. So a quick, another quick plug for OSF. Um, how many IVs are you going to have? Well, well, the hard thing is uh, sometimes for people is understanding dummy coding. I have a couple more videos on dummy coding if you want more here, but what's going to happen is um, for illiteracy, that's a continuous variable. So we get one predictor for that. So I'm here. Murder is a categorical variable. So you're gonna get K minus one predictors for that. And murder in this case has low average and high murder rates by state. And so we're gonna get two predictors. So K minus one levels minus one for that number of variables. And we'll talk about why in just a second. For the interaction, what you get is the number of X times the number of M uh, predictors. So in that case, this is gonna be two because we have one continuous X and two categorical predictors for M. So two times one is two. So overall, we have five very five predictors. And so what's happening with this dummy coding is that you get one co group that's coded all as zeros. So the way I think about dummy coding, um, or sometimes called contrast coding, there's different ways to 
to, to do this, we're going to talk about boring old regular dummy coding, <clears throat> is that each group gets their own unique code, it's their own binary code, or if you like barcodes better, each group gets their own code. Okay. One group is coded completely as zeros. One group is coded as one in the first slot and then as many other zeros as necessary. The next group will get coded as zero in the first slot, one in the next slot, zero, zero, zero. And then you keep going with that pattern. Um, but it's not necessary for each group to have a one because the first group pattern is all zeros. So the patterns are all zeros or zeros and one, uh, one zero. Bleh. Let me try that again. The patterns are all zeros or one, one, and all zeros. There, that time I got it. So we can make a little table here of um, how this might look. And this is how R is gonna do this for you naturally as part of the way L the LM function handles categorical predictors um, or factored predictors. And it's going to say whichever group is the first category, which we'll get into that issue in a second in R, is going to be the all zero group. Then the average, the next group will be the one zero group. Last group will be zero one. So students ask me a lot, like, why don't I need three columns here? Because they think that everybody has to have a one, effectively. And really, at this point, every group has their own unique binary code or barcode, right? So zero, zero is a perfectly valid combination. Zero, one is a good combination. One, uh, one zero is a good combination. If we added that extra column, we would end up with a singular matrix or sometimes a uh, Hessian matrix, but you'll get a, a matrix error. There's a lot of mathematical reasons why these won't run if you include all three columns, because in a sense, uh, the columns are perfectly correlated because if I know who the other two groups are, it's obvious who the third is. Even if you didn't totally get that, what will happen is you get K number of groups minus one columns. Okay. And so each variable represents, each variable represents <clears throat> the group with all zeros versus a group with the one. So the first variable we'll get is low versus average because it's the group with all zeros versus the one. The next group we'll get is all zeros, so low, versus high, the group of the one. All right, now, going over to R here. Uh, if you need to install the package or you need to update this package, because I update this pretty regularly on Fridays, um, be sure you install the newest version, and this is how you do it with the DevTools library. I'm gonna load my library. <clears throat> And then we're gonna load that states data set that we used last time. Now, the nice thing about the states data set is that it has all these variables, but murder's currently a continuous variable. So we're gonna factor that out just for the purposes of giving you an example of what a factored variable looks like. So I'm creating a fake factored variable here called murder cat, so I know what it is. And I'm using some if else statements to code that into low, average, and high. However, warning in advance, uh, what R does when you pull in a factored variable for the first, usually for the first time, um, is that it will alphabetize the levels. So if you use the levels command on your variable, <clears throat> you'll see that it has alphabetized them into average, high, and low. When you run LM on a factored variable, it will assume that the first group is the comparison group. So we would get average to high and average to low. If that's not what you want, reorder it. There's a reorder command, I think, in the car library. I think it's just as easy to use the factor command. Just make sure you spell your levels correctly or you'll wipe it out. So you'd have to start over. Um, but the way this works is you just do factor, the name of the variable, and then type the levels that you want spelled exactly the same in the order that you want. So I'm gonna reorder this to low, average, and high. So we would now do levels, states. Let's just look at it one more time. Oops, 
helps if you spell levels correctly. There, now we're at low, average, and high. So just that's my only warning here is to make sure that your lo uh, levels are ordered the way that you want them to be with the control or comparison group listed first. Okay. Now I have assumed when you run, these pa run my package that you have already data screened your data for inaccurate data, which is what we've kind of just been done, and any missing data. Missing data will get excluded just like a regular analysis um, list-wise essentially. So anybody who has any missing data will be excluded from that uh, linear model where they would have been excluded. Um, what's the other thing? That's it. There was something else, but I've forgotten it now. Oh, the other thing you'd really want to check for is to make sure that your categorical predictor does not have, uh, is not too few in each category. So part of data screening here would also include just a quick check to make sure that your uh, category levels have enough people in them. So we don't want to try to predict two people in a group, right? So we want to make sure that each group has enough people. All right, that being said, this is still the moderation one function. And uh, I changed the, uh, I didn't change anything about the way it runs for categorical uh, moderation with two continuous variables, but you'll see that the output on this one is just a touch different because of the way that it runs the simple slopes. So uh, I'm trying to keep everything as consistent as possible week to week, but sometimes it's just not possible. <laughs> so uh, if you're running moderation with two continuous variables, you'll pull like model one low and model one high. If you're running moderation with a categorical moderator, you'll see that you'll have like a list of each category. And that's just a practical thing in the background that has to happen. The way you run this though is exactly the same, which is kind of nice. So Y is gonna be our DV. These are the names of the columns in the data set, in quotes. Okay. Put in X, which is the name of the IV. Our M variable, so the moderator for our simple slopes. Any CVs you want to include, so I, I didn't include any this time. <clears throat> the data frame with the columns um, from X and Y here. And with or without outliers. So pay, take your pick. True is the default. Um, you could turn that off and tell it to exclude outliers. You could run this twice and see it with and without. Okay. Now we'll warn you, this does run infinitely faster than our mediation because it's not bootstrapping. So quick and done. If we want to view the outlier analysis, that would be save data screening full data. Okay. So you get your own data frame back. So the, if your data frame is very large, this will um, take up a lot of space. So out here on the side, I can see bad leverage and bad cooks. I did not get Mahalanobis distance because I only had one continuous variable. If you have two or more continuous variables, you will see that predictor as well. I could sort my total outliers and decide if I wanted to exclude this outlier or not. So I have one person who's got bad leverage and bad cooks. I got to decide what I want to do with them. And I'm going to scroll over here, see what state it is. Rhode Island. <laughs> so Rhode Island is our, our outlier. And that is looking at income and illiteracy, probably because they're on the kind of the middle of the road illiteracy, kind of on the lower end for income, if I had to guess. Uh, and their murder rate is low. So we'd have to decide, eh, exclude them, exclude them. Uh, I could run this whole thing again and tell with outliers as false. And that would actually exclude Rhode Island. But Rhode Island's still state, it's still there, so I'm gonna leave it in. Let's look at our correlation of our predictors. Now this will give us a bunch of madness. So let me see if I can try running that again, maybe make it a little readable. So here we go, we're down here. And we wanna ignore the intercept and we just wanna look at um, each variable correlated with the other variables. So I do have some really high um, correlations here. Now illiteracy has been mean centered. The categorical variable has not been mean center because that makes zero sense, um, but it does still mean center any continuous variable in the interaction. Uh, so we do have some pretty big predictors. Uh, the predictors will always be highly correlated with their interaction because they're part of the interaction, but I don't think anything's too nuts. Some of them are kind of high, 
but we should be okay. <clears throat> All right, let's look at linearity here. So our linearity plot looks really good. We just got this one wonky person up here. Normality plot's pretty good. Got, again, this one person over here, but most of the data is between two and two and centered over zero. Our homogeneity plot, okay, let me blow this one up. See how that looks. Make it a little more square and a little less crazy. <clears throat> now, excluding this one person over here, most of the data is between two and two and then three and two here. So it's kind of it's looking kind of okay. Um, then if I draw a line around the data, it's not pretty. There's kind of like this weird mountain range visual going on, but with only 50 states, this is kind of hard. So homogeneity, homoscedasticity, scedasticity look pretty good. Now let's look here. So let's walk through, how do I look at the models? kind of clear all this out. Um, to look at the overall model, the, the as sort of average simple slopes, like just give me, is the interaction significant? It's still model one. Okay. And what we'll see here is our five predictors. So one, two, three, four, five. So when we talk about power here in a second at the end, that's where I got five predictors from. I remember I created two for our murder variable and then two for our interaction. And what we want to do is talk about maybe the overall model first. So I'm going to pull my F statistics from down here. So I would say F of, comment this out, F of 5 and 44 is 5.23, P value is less than 0 0.001, or it is 0 0.001 if I round up. Right. R squared is 0.37. So kind of a big effect. Then I could talk about each predictor one at a time. So literacy, the B value is under estimate here. Okay. So 622.7. Then we do T, we'd say 44. Remember T is the same as our second F statistic here. It's 1.0. 9 and p equals 0 0.280. <clears throat> so the interpretation here is that illiteracy does not predict uh, income rates. <clears throat> Weirdly, it's positive. Then we can talk about each murder level, and I won't super bore you, but I do want to talk about the interpretation of categorical predictors in, R, in um, regression. So this very first one where it says murder cat average here, is the average murder rate versus the low murder rate because it's the group with all zeros or in our case the lowest level which is the low group and the other way that's easy to see it in R is it's the the one that looks like it's not there so it kind of looks like low isn't in the equation I get asked this by my students when we start doing this topic like wait what happened to low where did it go well low is in there it's just part of a comparison so if you compare, if you think about this as a ANOVA post hoc test, that's what's happening. So it's giving me average versus low and low versus high. If I wanted the other combination, I'd have to rerun this. Okay. Uh, reorder and then rerun. So our average versus our low here, I'm gonna uh, here. So negative 2.918, oh. <clears throat> And our T is still 44 equals, I'm going to scooch this over just a little bit. So our T values, uh, negative 0 0.92 and P equals 0 0.363. The nice thing about having all of this saved is that let's say you're using um, some sort of uh, table in your output or you're writing this markdown, you can make it pull these entire rows for you. And so at this average versus low, there's not a significant difference between low and average murder rates for income. Okay. So um, we're basically saying that there's no difference between the groups. And we could do that same thing for the second one, which is murder, uh, high versus low, 
And so our B value is negative 1.22.8, da da da, fill in the rest. And this one is also not significant. And if you really want to see what's going on, you can use T apply. What you want to do is do states, so our data set. We could use our save data set if you're using the no outliers one. Um, what we want to do is do the DV, so income. Thank you, R Studio, for helping me with my spelling problems. Literacy by, oh, I'm sorry, not by literacy. By our categorical variable and calculate the mean. And that would show us the, the mean scores. Now, normally these things are the just literally just the subtraction between groups, but you have to remember there are other variables in the equation. So it's controlling for the interaction as well. It's and illiteracy, so it's not quite just like group one minus group two. Okay. Often it is, in this case it's not. So the interaction is difficult. This is the hard part. So we're gonna say this is illiteracy by average versus low. So that's just really hard to think about. That's like the difference between average and low murder rates interacting with illiteracy, which is a continuous variable. And so we could all write all that out, but it's not significant. And then we also have the second one, which is illiteracy by high versus low, which is significant. Now we don't know anything about the low average versus high combination at the moment. If I wanted to, I could rerun this and reorder my levels. But it's much easier to think about the um, slopes for each group. So what we're gonna do is break down this interaction by calculating the illiteracy to murder, wait, sorry, illiteracy to income slopes for each level of murder. So let me write that down. So break this down. So what we're gonna get is illiteracy predicting uh, income for each group level, typing is hard on a Friday, of murder, or your M variable, whatever M is. Okay. And that's why this output is just slightly different than the previous week's output when you looked at moderation one. So if you have two continuous variables, the slope, um, slope stuff is gonna be model one low and model one high. If you have categorical variables, it's kind of hard to predict how many categories you have. So what it does is it runs a bunch of slope models based on the number of categories included. So if you have 10 categories, it'll run nine of these. And so I've just called it slope models. Okay. Now slope models output will just show you the slopes for each group, which is kind of nice, but it gives you no T value output, but that will at least show you what they're called. So it's called low, average, and high. The easier way to view this is with L apply. So we're really getting into the apply family today. So L applies for list apply. And what I'm gonna do is just tell it to give me a summary of each of those slope models in my list. And now that might be a lot of output for you, but it also can, it will show you kind of how to call them. So for the low group, the <clears throat> illiteracy rate is not predictive, so you'll notice that this is the same as our original model. So let me kind of type these out real quick. So for low group, illiteracy is 622.7. For our average group, scroll down a little bit more, see how it says average here. Here's illiteracy, it's 125. <clears throat> And that is also not significant. And then for our high group, scroll down one more, we got negative 902.6, and that one is significant. <laughs> oh my gosh, should give up. <laughs> significant. Um, so what this, tells me is that at low and average levels of, of murder, so this is not low illiteracy, this is low murder levels, the illiteracy B value, 
So the interpretation is the same. So how I would interpret this is that at low and average murder rates, illiteracy does not predict uh, income levels. At, at high murder rates, illiteracy negatively predicts or negatively impacts income such that for every increase in illiteracy we get decreases in income at about 900 points. Okay. The other thing you could do, so you could look at this with LApply, is actually pull them one at a time. Okay, so I could do saved dollar sign slope models dollar sign low okay. now that doesn't really get me anywhere so I could put a summary wrapper around that and that will get me um, just that one one at a time okay. another thing you can do okay, so this gets to be lots of dollar signs um, is tell it to pull the coefficients for you so coef here and that will actually give you more than one decimal so sometimes summary shows you one decimal there's ways to change this but um, uh, if you want to see more of the decimals you could um, use the coef function and then there's other ways to see the t table as well so if you're wanting more precision than what we've been seeing um, can, that's one option and so I could keep going with that so then I could do summary saved dollar sign slope models dollar sign and pull the average one and so this will list out each group one at a time if you're wanting to kind of do more with it L apply also sort of gives you the the summaries one at a time <clears throat> kind of depends on how much output you want to see at once now I still have that uh, interpretation of the slopes this one's just much easier to read because it's a uh, by group so cat the cat function just makes this look pretty, although I don't know if I'd describe this as pretty, cut and paste it into Word maybe. You'll also see more decimals. So at low levels of murder, you see that every increase in illiteracy predicts blah, 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 increases in income. You'd have to remember that that's not significant. Okay. At average levels of murder, you can see every unit increase predicts 1.24 change in income, also not significant, but then at high levels of murder, we get a negative change in income. So this just will help you make sure that you've pulled the right numbers and um, how to interpret them. Uh, remembering that significance is a uh, controversy right now, at least in social science, but uh, is determined by how you feel about p-values. All right, now I've created this graph here with ggplot. So I'm gonna click saved graph slopes. This is actually gonna make you a scatter plot. Um, of the of the data grouped scatter plot with the lines and 95% confidence intervals on those lines. So it's got a literacy down here on the bottom, X, Y, and our levels of M. If you do not love the way this looks, you can run the name of the function without um, the open and close parentheses. And you'll kind of have to look because I've uh, made this a lot more complicated, uh, uh, but it's the second one here. So this is happening uh, in the background. What this is doing is, wait, where's plot? Here's plot. It's creating a ggplot based on um, geom point and a geom smooth. Right? So you could kind of take that code and edit it yourself for the ggplot brave. Last but not least is power. So I'm gonna load the PWR library to calculate power. We had said that our R squared was 0.37, so let's see how many people we would have needed. So we're gonna take R squared and convert that to Cohen's F. So this is like F to eta. It's kind of why it's called theta. Plus, I also love cheese. So um, the things we're gonna fill in here is U is the degrees of freedom model, which is the number of predictors. We figured out that was five. V is the degrees of freedom error or um, residual, with that's the number we're trying to figure out, so we're going to leave that as null. F2 is Cohen's F squared, which we just calculated. So here I'm going to fill in U is 5, V is null, um, F2 is our F2 value here. I'm going to leave this at 0.05 and 0.8 because those are my standards, but you can change those. 
And this would be for the overall model. So I would need 22 plus five, this is 27. So be sure you add U and V to get the final sample size. Um, so overall, I would need about 30 people to make this work. Now, what I could do is also think about just the interaction. So let's say we knew the interaction was 20% of that predictive value. Could rerun this. My interaction is two predictors um, because it's murder by illiteracy for low versus average, murder by illiteracy for average versus high. And it was basically the same equation, just now it's two predictors instead of um, five. So it's the addition to the R squared, and we need just a couple more. So we've got about 41 participants here. So you could take those and pick the bigger one. You could um, average the two. Okay, don't go with the smaller one, because then you're likely to be underpowered. Okay. Um, and so all that together from the start is now our new moderation one function that covers categorical moderators. Like I said, just send me um, any problems that you have, also any requests uh, I will also try to work on. And the next up I'm not totally sure about, but I'm also gonna be working on adding log regression for um, both mediation and moderation in R so that you can do those with categorical Y and then also multi-level model versions of all of these so that you can run um, a multi-level moderator or mediation analysis. So coming soon to a GitHub near you.